Hi, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the best way to get to the moon in Kerbal Space Program Realism Overhaul. Uh, some of the mods that I'm using, of course, I have all the Realism Overhaul mods, such as uh, Real Fuel, Ferrum Aerospace, uh, Remote Tech, and a couple of others. Of course. Oh, and I also have FASA that I downloaded separately. Uh, but in this, I'm going to show you the absolute best angle to get a launch in the moon. Here is my rocket that I will be flying. I have uh, what I believe is the, uh, what they're going to be using for the SLS tank, you know, space launch system, main fuel tank. Um, of course the engine that's provided with it that comes with FASA, so I guess the RS-225 Delta slash Echo 4. And then on here I have my Pyros boosters. Uh, as you can see for the Delta V, I have way too much Delta V just to be doing a landing on the moon, but for a good rocket, 20,000 meters per second of Delta V is pretty good. So the way I like to get to the moon is in one shot, instead of doing a circularization burn, I just zoom out, I'll set the moon as a target, and I will line up the orbit of the moon with the Earth, just like so. And then I'm going to time warp until the moon is roughly about here in its orbit. And then once it's there, I'm going to uh, set the relative inclination here in the rendezvous planner via Mechjeb. Uh, once I get it down to about 0.5 of a degree, then that is when I do my launch. So I'm there. So now I'm just going to wait till it gets down to 0.5. And then I should be ready for launch. Oh, there you go. So you can see my relative inclination is 0.37, which is good enough. I'm going to hit full ignition and get ready for liftoff. stats over here. I have a long time uh, for some of these burns. This 12 minutes is rather ridiculous. Um, I can design a better rocket to get me there a little bit faster, but I'm also using the same design to get to Mars, which I'll be doing in another video. Uh, so yeah, I guess just uh, sit back and relax and uh, enjoy the flight. I'll do is I'll just switch over to orbit and then I will not 
force roll, just hit prograde. Um, and then from there, with this rocket, just because I, of how I designed, designed it, it works really well. Uh, once the information is actually put down. You see on the horizon, there is the moon. So just like in the uh, stock KSB, put the moon on the horizon, just you shoot towards it, and you're pretty much there. So here we have booster separation, and then once I get up to a hundred thousand meters, that's when I will separate the fairings. Although it doesn't really matter when, when I do it, because this rocket has a luff fuel to get there. there so for the sake of this video, I'll go back to the map, and I will just time warp my way through this. Sorry for all the spastic camera angles. So as you can see, this uh, space launch system has a lot of delta V, and so I have uh, can take some getting used to when launching this rocket, just because the thrust to weight ratio is so light, especially if you're trying to get a really heavy payload into orbit. But I think my payload for this is about 24 tons, I want to say. You can see. Oh, no, excuse me, 10 tons, so it's, uh, no, 46 tons, I'm way off. So yeah, 46 tons to orbit is what this will get me. So there we go. Got a little bit of lag there. And it looks like my time to apoapsis is starting to go way up, so it looks like I am good for at least an orbit. So I'm just going to switch over to the map view from here. I'm sorry for the video, I have absolutely no editing software whatsoever, nor do I have any idea how to edit a video. I think I don't feel like buying Adobe Bridge just to edit a couple of videos. But it looks like I'm getting ready to burn out. If I just gotta find, there it is. So for this stage, you can kind of see it. You can see that I've got five engines over here. So for this uh, first part, I have just two engines being lit. Um, the reason why I want to do this is because each of these engines, they only have one ignition. So if I click on it, these two have zero. But if I click on ones that haven't been used, there's only one remaining. I can just use the RCS thrusters to accelerate the craft. And from there, I can ignite these engines. Uh, really comes in handy when I'm trying to search the rise around the moon or if I get my trajectory just right once I turn these engines off I can just directly impact the moon. Uh, one thing I can never forget whenever I do these missions is to stay in contact with Earth. So I need to activate my Earth and I'm done. And that's it. So now, uh, from here, go back to map view, you can see where the moon is in orbit relative to Earth and where to where uh, my spacecraft is launching. So here, I'm just going to time warp. And we should get a nice little intercept with the moon. So the moon apoapsis is around 350 is when I need to start really looking out for an intersection. 350 million meters. So, focus the view, come out of time warp, just to make sure that I don't miss it. Because, boy, that happens a lot. Thank goodness for RCS. You can see they're getting closer. And there we go. I, in one shot, without circularizing and without uh, doing any special changes of inclination, I have managed to get to the moon and I have 7,482 meters per second of delta V to land on the moon. So here, I'll just climb up to the moon. I will warp there.
And there we go. So the only problem with uh, remote tech is I can lose my craft very easily. So before it crashes into the moon's surface, I'll give it a low periaps. 130 is good enough. I can come over here. Let me get rid of the alarm clock. Go to remote tech. Um, node 100% throttle. Execute. There we go. And if I click that, it should be hold move appropriate, and it's going to work. So now for the tricky part, I do have to make sure that my RCS is activated. And there we go. I'll just time warp. position to get it ready. Off. Two minutes, that's off. Another two minutes. I'm just going to pick up the node. Accelerate that. There we go. Now, turn to a new node. Let's accelerate forward and then hit spacebar. Take you a little bit of main line to access the RCS just to get this craft to move. And this should execute, so I shouldn't have to turn it off. So I'm worried I wasn't going to have any signal over here. But it should be fine. And so with this, I should be able to, once I get my parry out, I'm just going to do a full burn, and I should just be able to uh, actually go ahead and throw it go. So now, let me go ahead, turn that off. Let's see, as soon as this gives me a signal, that is when I will start my burn. And as you can see, it is uh, just doing that one launch. It is quite easy to get to the moon. And I think with that, uh, from here, all I would do is to land on the moon, I would just use my last remaining engine on this stage here, or I guess the call, I'd, call, I'd call it the third stage. I still have the center engine to fire. I would just use the rest of that to deorbit. Yes, there's quite a lot of time, but I just use physical time acceleration, and RCS is a really big help. Uh, other than that, I hope this helps someone out there. Thank you.